Welcome to Easy Limo Learning Simplified. My name is Eric. I'll be taking you through this topic rate, ratio, proportion, and percentages. And for this lesson, we're going to look at applications of proportions. So uh, how do you apply? Previously, we talked about proportions, and we want to see now how what we learned in the previous video about uh, proportions. Remember, we said proportions simply means uh, equal ratios, or, or, or we say that uh, uh, proportions basically compares uh, two or more ratios. So two or more ratios would be considered to be in proportion if they are equal. So we have a few sample questions to see to help us with the uh, understanding of how we apply proportions in answering, in, in maybe solving problems. And then, of course, at the end of the lesson, we have a few questions in the form of assignment to help you practice and just to help you check on your understanding of the same concept as discussed through this lesson. So these are a few questions involving proportions, and our, our first example is that you're supposed to find the value of x, which makes the following ratios equal. Remember we said uh, when, we, when, when two ratios are equal, they are considered to be in proportions. So let's see. So uh, what we learned in the previous lesson was that if these two ratios are in proportion, then this can be interpreted to mean that the first one on this side divided by the first one on the other side should be equal to the first one, the, the second one on this side divided by the second one on the other side. So we have uh, 2 over x is equals to 3 over, over 9. You see? This then means that... So when you want to find the value of the unknown here, remember these proportions basically can be used to, to find the value of a given unknown. For example, here, this x could be representing the number of people, it could be representing the number of vehicles, as you're going to see in real life application of the same thing. So when you want to find this value here, what you're going to do, or how we solve this problem is simply that we, we multiply this diagonal here, and that should be equal to the product of this other diagonal here. See that. So we have 3 multiplied by x equals to 2 multiplied by, by 9. So take note of what you have said. This diagonal here should be equal to the diagonal there. So it's the product of the two. You know, you multiply this is equals to the other one. You see. So we are interested in getting the value of x. When we're talking about algebra, we said this means when you say 3x, it means 3 times x. So for you to get the value of this, what you need to do is that what can you subtract or or add or multiply or, or divide so that we only have x remaining on this other side. So what we'll do, we'll simply divide this other expression here by 3. And because the two are supposed to be equal, the moment you do anything to this, whether you subtract, you add, you divide, or you multiply, you must also do it to the other side. So because we have divided by 3, remember we, we've known that now when you divide this by 3, x will be alone, and that's x what we're looking for. So you have to divide the other side by 3 as well. And so 3 will cancel 3 here. So 3 cancels 3. And then the other side, we now have uh, 2 by 9 divided by 3. So again, 3 goes here, 1, 3 goes there 3 times. And so you multiply this 3 by this 2. So what does that mean? That 2 by 3 is equals to 6. So for these two ratios to be uh, considered to be in proportion, then the value of x must be 6, so that they are the same, you see. So for the two ratios to be in proportion, the value of x has to be 6, you see. That will make the two ratios to be equal. So again, we have this, which is more or less the same as uh, the, the previous ones. The difference now is that we have certain values given as mixed numbers instead of having them all as whole numbers as we saw in the previous example. So what will we do? So the approach is still the same. We have the first value here divided by the first one on the other side. So we have 1, 1 half divided by 3 and 1 half should be equal to the second one on this side, which is 3 divided by x. The reason why I'm not using the horizontal by is because now every time you have fractions, it's, it's not really convenient to write one half divided by one third. It's not really convenient. That's why I'm using the, instead of using this horizontal bar here, I'm using the division sign. But the interpretation is the same. 
So we have the first one divided by the first one on the other side, because the two are in proportion to the fact that they are they are equal. Yes. So we have one one half divided by one one half. I mean three one half is equals to three divided by x. So that means you'll have to simplify this. We have talked about this in one of our previous videos, how you divide fractions, you know, operations involving fractions. So here is an application of the same. So how do you do it? So the first thing that you'll do is to change these uh, numbers, both of them, they are mixed numbers, you change them to improper fractions. This is going to be 3 over 2. If you don't know how that is done, again, you can check on our previous videos on how that is done. You'll be able to see how it's supposed to be done. So want to change this to improper fraction, you simply multiply the denominator by the whole number part, and then the, the result is added to the numerator part. So that is 2 by 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So 3 over. Remember to maintain the denominator. So this is divided by, divided by, again, 2 by 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So that is giving us 7 over 2. On, 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 the, on the left hand side and the right hand side, you still have 3 over x. So again, uh, division of fractions, the division sign changes to multiplication sign and then the divisor here, we get what, what, what is called its multiplication inverse. Basically, what is in the numerator, denominator goes to the numerator and the, the numerator goes to the denominator. So we have 3 over 2 multiplied by 2 over 7. You can see now 2 goes there, 1, 2 goes there, 1. So what do we have left on the left hand side, 3 over 7. So this other side, we still have 3 over x. Left hand side, now we have 3 over 7. You see? And this is 3 over x. So this is more or less the same as what we had in the previous example, you see, where we had integral values. So what we said, this interpretation, if you want to find the value of a non, then you do what's called the product of the one diagonal is equal to the product of the other diagonal. See. That is what we were able to discuss in the previous example. So that means then 3x is equals to 7 by uh, 7 by 3. So how do you find the value of x? You either subtract something from this other side, or you 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 add something to this, or you divide it by something, or you multiply by something to so that we only have x remaining. So here it's more convenient that we just divide this side by 3. 3 will cancel here, we only have x remaining there. So then the two uh, the two sides are the same. It's like they are on a balance. So the moment you do anything to this other side, you have to do it on the other side so that, so that that balance is maintained. So because you have divided this side by 3, you also have to divide the other side by by 3. Of course, this other, this, this other side, 3 cancels 3, and then we have x. The other side, 3 goes here, 1, 3 goes there, once. 1 times 7 is 7. What that means is, for the 2 to be in proportion, then the value of x has to be 7. For this side to be equal to, for this uh, ratio here to be the same. Remember, we have said proportions uh, compares ratios, and they are, the, the ratios will be considered to be in proportion if they are equal. You see, this one. So this other side and the other side are only equal if and only if the value of x here is 7. So you see, that is helping us find the value of x. And we're going to see, I said this x could be representing certain value in real life. Maybe it could be representing the number of houses, the number of units. It could be representing the number of people. Maybe it could be in a school where we're talking about the ratio of boys to girls or the number of classrooms to the number of students. So this could be representing number of a certain number in real life. We're going to see how that can be done in uh, one of our videos that is going to come after this as we continue with our discussions on proportions. So we have another one here where we have again 7 to 5 is 35 to. So again, we said if this is in proportion, then 7 over 35 uh, should be equal to the second one, which is 5 divided by by the second one on the other side. So first one divided by the first one is equal to the second one divided by the when they are in proportion. You said 7 is proportional to 35, this is proportional to the other one. So what you do now, you multiply. If I want to find the value of x, how we do it in mathematics, that this diagonal here, the product of this diagonal, equal to the product of the other diagonal. So it means 7x. Now you've seen in almost all the cases that the letter has been on the left-hand side of the equation. So it's more convenient that you start with the diagonal that is containing the letter, you know, the, the, the value we're trying to find. Like I'm trying to find x. So uh, I'd rather start with this diagonal here. So 7 and the product of 7 and x. So that is giving me 7x and 35 here by, by, by 5. So we have 35 multiplied by 5. So again, I will have to do something here. 
that will help me remove any other value except x. So x alone should remain on this other side. So what will I do? I will simply divide this side by by 5. I mean by this 7 here. This 7 here, when you're talking about algebra, we called it coefficient. So basically, you try to do something that will help you do away with the coefficient here, you know, 7. So if I divide by 7, the coefficient will go. So because I've divided this side by 7, for that balance to be maintained, remember this side is equal to, this side was originally equal to the other side. So if you do anything to this other side, you have to do it to the other side as well, so that that balance is maintained. So you divide by 7 on the other side as well. So this side, 7 cancels 7, I have x. On the other side, 7 goes into 35. So 7 here, 1, 7 there, 5 times. So 5 by 5, 25. So it simply means then, for the two ratios to be in proportion here, then the value of x has to be 25. Or rather, for this to be equal to the other, then the value of x has to be 25. So again, we have another one here. You can see now these ones are decimals. So the same thing, we have 0. Point, uh, uh, we have 0. Point. Maybe you can try and uh, simplify this first, or you can simply divide directly. So we have 0. 0.3 divided by x should be equal to the second one, which is 0. 0.1 divided by 11. So again, this the product of this diagonal here is equal to the product of the other one. So we have 0.1x uh, is equals to 11 times 0.3. So again, I have to divide both sides by 0.1 so that I only have x remaining on this other side, 0.1. So x is equals to 11 times 0.3 divided by 0.1. So how will I remove the decimals? I simply multiply both of them by 10. And this 10 will move the decimal point from here to here. That will make this number whole number. So that's 3. The same applies to this. The 10 will move the decimal point from this position to this position. That will change it to 1. So it means then the value of x as you continue from there should be 11 times 3. 11 by 3 and then divided by 1. Division by 1 doesn't make any difference. So you can as well ignore it so that you only have 11 times 3. And that is going to give us 33. So that means then that for these two ratios to be in proportion, then the value of x has to be 33. So that is really going to help us uh, solve or find certain values in real life as we're going to see possibly in the next video. So we have a few questions here to help you practice on the same. Now here you're supposed to find the value of y that will make the following ratios uh, equal. So that will make them to be proportional. Otherwise, that marks the end of the lesson. Until next time, goodbye.